Welcome to day 29 of our January challenge 2020, dipping into Sylvia Wood's arrangement of Pachelbel's Canon. So we're now going to look um, again on page 10, we're going to look at the lowest three lines. It's the next eight bars from what we were doing yesterday. We're back to quavers having been doing semi-quavers yesterday. Um, and I will play it through for you. Um, I have to be honest and say that I quite often, just for this section, end up playing the easier version um, when it comes to this part. So it's quite interesting for me now to be playing the advanced harp part version. Um, so here we go. Three and four and. we looked at the end section of the piece which had and then the other voice and then the other voice it's that same idea of these sort of two voices so as a voice and then another voice singing um, in sort of a duet with each other okay um, so really take yourself time through it there's a lot of leaps in this Is you end on an E and then we leap an octave to the E up here cross over with the D and reach three and four to the F and D thumb on the B and we're gonna leap again three four back up three two leap two one so B to a B, three, four, and then three on this A. Okay, all the fingerings marked in, it's just being conscious of where you're placing or where you're able to need to leap, really. Left hand really nice and straightforward if you're nice and calm with it. Um, we're playing a D with our thumb placed ready on the A, and then we'll reach out the octave. Put three on the B and thumb on the F. Reach out the octave. Up onto the G, thumb on the D. Reach out the octave. Go back to the G and the D and this time we move finger two to an A. So nice and straightforward under there. So if we just try that line, hands together. Okay, just that line. Three and four and. and we don't lose any of the quality of the notes. I had a slightly woolly sounding note in there. Um, so really bending fingers in ever so well and thumbs over so that every single note has its place and has its value and it can be heard. Okay, then the next section, if we just do the left hand first, we have the D octave, adding the fifth in. So it's a nice little sort of oscillation. Boom, ba, dee, dum. Then we move to an A. Same size thing, B, so we've got this basic pattern to the G, up to the G, and that one to the A. It's just the same pattern, it's the octave and the fifth, but you don't have the fifth on until you've played the lower note. And you can actually do a bit of a, have a bit of a wobble, have a bit of a, a movement so that you get that nice, oscillating back and forward okay top hand we start this line on a d and then we have this leap up an octave okay 
okay and so we place through that d c d f a then we go up so we leap now here what's written in is to get a four on that b so that you can get your three two one okay there is a chance that you could just go to a three and then leap less secure crossing under placing on okay um, what this wants to have is a feel of lightness of da da di da dum da da di da dum that not sort of really ploddy and heavy but actually um, sort of yeah, lightness is a good word for it. Okay, um, so if we play these two lines, hands together, if you feel up to it, um, it feels a little odd having just been doing these crotchets and minims to suddenly get back into a quaver feel in your left hand. So starting on the second to last line on page 10, three and four and. playing around with it again. This um, particular sort of set of videos for this isn't so much that you master this in a day, um, so much as giving you the groundwork for moving on with it in your own time um, over a period of time. Okay, well done.